as one looks out across the Serengeti, one sees many useless animals that fill no particular niche within their local ecosystem. Doomed to forever be an evolutionary dead end, they spend their days lounging around in bulk. There are some more fortunate creatures, though, creatures that are the life and soul of the Serengeti and can be seen in plentiful numbers. The Salamangrate gazelle, once an endangered species, has recently made a comeback, with its population numbers expected to triple come September 25th. In this documentary series, we will take a look at some of our more useful mammalian friends, their role within this carefully balanced ecosystem, and the ideal population numbers for each one of them. Thank you, David. Hello there, everyone, and welcome to my Salmon Great deck profile. New Banlist has finally let Gazelle come back to three. I only started playing Salmon Great when Gazelle was already at one, so in every game my entire brain thus far has been dedicated to the question of, how do I get to Gazelle? But now that Gazelle is at three, I can move on with my life and look beyond the horizon to greater things. Not only is the deck uh, at full power, but our worst matchup, Kashtira, just lost the thing that made it such a horrible matchup for us. I'm just going to jump straight into the deck profile, so we're going to start with the Salmon Great ratios. Your main normal summons now are Salmon Great of Fire and Salmon Great Foxy at the top there. When Gazelle was still at 1, I played Buffalo at 3 and 2 Fire because Fire was weak into hand traps in the same way that Lady Debug was. And if it did get hand trapped, you just needed an extender in your hand or your turn was over. But with Gazelle at 3, we now have more extenders and our opponents will always need to think if it's even worth hitting Fire with a hand trap if, say, they only open an Infirm, for example. Fox hit too because he's the second best normal summon and his wave effect is great for outing the in fashion floodgate at the moment, there can only be one. And he just generally is a very good extender. So we're still playing three spinny. If you open spinny and away to both gazelle and fire, then your end board can include both traps. He's also a great level three extender in general. And of course we're playing three salmon great gazelle, the best card in the deck. It's a free special summon when you basically get any salmon great into your grave. Having this back at three makes probably one of the most consistent decks in the game even more consistent and it just adds so much to your ceiling you can play around the beer a lot more easily he's finally back at three he deserved to be back at three a long time ago but let's just be happy that we finally have him now for those of you that have particularly sharp eyesight you'll notice that i'm playing one jack jagger one falco and one weasel jack jagger's only purpose is to live in our graveyard and we now have infinite ways basically to get him there if you do open him in hand then you want to make sure you dump a foxy in grave to get jack jagger into grave as well one Falco, I'm not entirely sure that he is necessary. I would consider bumping Jack Jaguar to two um, instead of having the Falco. But he sort of completes your resource loop. He is also the best target sent to your grave on your opponent's turn if you trigger Gazelle, as he can reset a trap and make your follow-up turn a lot stronger. On to another one of the new cards, Salmon Great Weasel. He is an awesome new card that I think is still underrated. Firstly, he is almost a free extender in hand. If I can, I add him with fire to help rebuild my board to an extent if I get nibbed. His grave effect is basically a free draw, triggers Sunlight Wolf, and if you want, you can bounce back the monster with Stalio, just to recur hand advantage. But sometimes letting them keep the monster is better, as it stops Imperm, Lightning Storm, Evenly Matched, any sort of Kashtira plays. And I guess many decks, just putting it under their EMZ can cause big issues, such as for Rika, they can't do like their Sun Avalon Link Monster plays, for example, as all their Link Monsters require a plant. Next I'll move on to non-engine interruptions. We're playing 3 Ash, 3 Veiler, 3 Nib as the hand traps. And for pseudo hand trap, we've got Imperm and we've also got Forbidden Droplet. I say pseudo for Imperm because it's also a board breaker when going second and top decking it. I found room for 15. You can swap this around any way you like. I'd recommend keeping the Ash because you can also recur it with Sunlight Wolf. And I maintain, never lost a game in which I recurred it with Sunlight Wolf. It's just that strong. You could possibly go to 18 as well when you see the rest of the list. Uh, you'd just be a little bit more susceptible to hand traps. Imper and Droplet are just very good top decks and can help you play into boards, which is something that our engine really struggles with. And with our Rise Heart now finally gone, Forbidden Droplet becomes a lot better. You also get a lot of free discards, because if you, if you drop it into a board of negates and you send Spinny, Jack Jaguar and Foxy, for example, you've not really got an egg at all. Onto our spells, we've got our two different search spells at the top, then the rest below it. So we're playing three circle. Only thing to say here is that the second effect will come up a lot more now that Gazelle is at three because you will often open a hand in which you don't even need to search. So you can just hold the circle in case they try and nip you. Three sign at mining as well. This one I'm a bit unsure of. We definitely don't need it as much as we used to. Three feels fine and super consistent, but I think you might be able to get away with less. I'm playing three will because Nibiru is starting to appear in a lot of main decks. And this will probably increase 
with Salmon Grape becoming more popular, especially if it proves to be a tier 1.5 or 2 deck when the new ban list actually comes into effect. But in general, Will is just an insane card. It does so much for the deck, so we want to open it in our hands as many times as possible. A lot of people play it at 1, which used to include myself to be fair, but even though it's technically searchable, it's not searchable in a way that allows you to use it for the purpose in which you'd want to search it. So if you're ever searching Will, it's because you want to play around Nib, but because all of the spell and trap searching dumps to the grave, except for Raging Phoenix, then you're not really going to be able to get utility out of it if they do Nib you. But also, having a copy of Will just face up on field post turn 1 and 2 is insanely good for the grind game. You can just bring back a Link 4, a Link 3 if you play any of them, your Link 2s. Book of Moon and Book of Eclipse are very popular at the minute. And if they Book of Moon or Book of Eclipse your normal summon, your turn is entirely over unless you've drawn the droplet in this deck. But with Will the Salmon Great, you can push through that and still play off. You just have to make sure you don't normal summon under the EMZ. Playing one Sanctuary because you have to, and we're playing the one Call by the Grave just to stop hand traps. Because we're not playing Flame Buffalo, our primary normal summon now is susceptible to hand traps, so running Call by the Grave certainly does help. Lastly for the main deck, playing a Bond of each trap. Both are searchable. Some people like playing 2 Roar because you normally use Roar's effect in Grave turn 1, so it means it's banished when it leaves the field and you can't recur it. But I think you can comfortably get away with running just one. I've never wished to run two, but run two if you feel like it. On to the extra deck. This is the Salmon Great lineup in the extra deck. We've got two Bailinks, two Wolf, two Phoenix, a Mirage Stalio, and an Almirage. I don't ever find myself needing more than two of the Bailinks, Wolf, and especially not the Raging Phoenix. You can get caught out by it, but only if you're not shuffling back the correct targets with Jack Jaguar. When it comes to the Almirage, I may remove this now that the deck has become even more consistent, but it's in here basically to restart your engine in Grave when normal summoning a hand trap. The one Mirage Stalio is by now standard as well. For the rest of the extra deck, we're playing the one Ling Garibo. This is great for stopping floodgates or making Heat Soul in certain lines as he's your backup end board if you don't open very well. This card is also just great into back row decks like Trap Tricks and Labyrinth. We then have the one Nightmare Phoenix. I've been hit by, there can only be one, one too many times, and this deals with it nicely if you have a hand trap in hand to normal summon. You also often get the draw part of the effect as you make it under a Sunlight Wolf. It doesn't conflict with Salmon Greater Fire, and you can also make Raging Phoenix using Phoenix and Sunlight Wolf. So it's a really good utility card for the deck. The update jammer, splash maze, transcode, and axis code are all part of your OTK line, and Heat Soul is your alternate end board, as I said earlier, in case you don't open that well. What I will say is, with the new support, you do find yourself making the axis code OTK a lot less frequently than you used to. OTKing with Raging Phoenix on turn 3 is very, very easy to do, so you don't really need the axis code. It does still come up, but if you're looking to play this deck on a real budget, then you can drop the axis code. And that concludes the deck profile. I've Done quite a lot of testing with this list online against other decks and it's performed very well, but because I'm making this list for a format that does not yet exist, there might be some changes that need to be made, but I think this is a good starting line for the deck going into the new format. Anyway, thanks for watching. Have a great day.